It was supposed to take 30 years to achieve. They did it in six. For the International Campaign to Ban Landmines, or ICBL, it achieved the impossible, persuading more than a hundred governments to support a ban on the production, sale and stockpiling of landmines. The treaty is to be signed in Ottawa in about two weeks, but don't count on the United States, China, Russia and Vietnam on being there. They're the major producers and defenders of the deadly devices. And it's in Cambodia where an estimated 10 million mines are waiting to go off. Inside Story reports on how survivors cope with their horrific injuries. And as Susan Yu tells us, campaigners are hardly resting on their laurels in heightening awareness. Villagers descend on the town of Bet Trang in southern Cambodia to make their offerings to a pair of oxen believed to have sacred healing powers. Offerings are made to the beasts that are considered Cambodia's ancient protectors. Yarmou Fowl also walks with a stick, but the great protectors will never be able to heal her and thousands of others from a modern scourge that can't be easily washed away. <coughs> Last year, eight agencies in Cambodia say landmines claimed 8,000 lives. The 29-year-old is part of the country's growing and tragic statistic. Yaimufal is one of the estimated 40,000 landmine victims who've lost a limb and more. <laughs> Yai Mu Fao lost her leg more than a decade ago. Since then, it's been a long recovery process. And it's images of Yai Mu Fao and others like her that have made a lasting impression on one particular person. When I came here for the first time 13 years ago and traveled throughout the country, I was impressed by the numbers of killing fields, but more so by the people. You could not come into Phnom Penh and not be impressed by the number of people hobbling around on sticks. The numbers of amputees in Cambodia has been considered the greatest proportionate to the rest of the population of any country in the world. There have been estimates that one out of 235 people in Cambodia are an amputee. Cambodia represents really one of the most devastated countries in the world because of landmines that you're going to find. And having had exposure to it and seen it, one couldn't help but try and do something about it. What the former Vietnam veteran did was to start in 1991 a center offering complete rehabilitation services. Since then, more than 7,000 landmine victims have come through the doors of the Kin Klang Center outside Phnom Penh. They leave with proper artificial limbs made on the premises, and they come back for follow-up care and training, and skills, ironically, in making prosthetics. Nearly a quarter of the 93 staff there are landmine victims. Kin Klang is one of about six rehab and training centers operating in the country. Demand far outstrips supply here, where two to three hundred people are maimed by landmines each month. Hey, yo! The outspoken Muller was crippled by a bullet and a landmine during the war in Vietnam. That hasn't slowed him down one bit. He takes extreme pride in the center and the fact that it was here in Cambodia where his aid agency initiated the worldwide campaign to ban landmines. You know that our organization started the international campaign because of here. In 91 we started working here and we were so taken by the problem with landmines and everybody was talking about it. But the difference that I think we added was we said, okay, let's actually do something. Let's try and 
outlawed internationally. And we started the campaign. And Mueller credits the late Princess of Wales, who had planned to visit Cambodia, for throwing her support behind the campaign. Yeah, I'm only trying to highlight a problem that's going on all around the world. That's all. Given the death of Princess Diana and what her dying has done in creating worldwide recognition of the problem of landmines, because she had gone to Angola this year, she'd gone to Bosnia, she came to Washington, D.C., and when she died, even President Clinton, when he addressed the nation, talked about her work in trying to get rid of the scourge of landmines. So now that we have public awareness at the highest level it's ever been, in large part because of her death, for the United States to walk away from an international treaty that will be signed by 100 countries is really unconscionable. If the right thing to do is so obvious for Washington, why didn't it do it? Unfortunately, this is a president that did not serve in the military. And because he didn't serve in the military, historically in his term of office, he has tended to give a lot of deference to the military. And he doesn't want to really stand down the military. I've spoken with the president now, I think, four times personally about the campaign and why we needed the United States to join it. And he's always said the same thing. I can't afford a breach with the Joint Chiefs. I can't afford not to have the support of my military. For now, Russia is seriously considering the ban. China, Vietnam and the United States, all major producers of landmines, don't have Ottawa on their agenda yet. Never mind that, for the ICBL and aid agencies in Cambodia, the offending nations have never been able to cripple their work. Well, it sure would be good if, if the U.S. was participating, but I think that, that a, a true ban treaty, and everyone thinks, I can speak for everybody in the campaign when I say that everybody believes that a true ban treaty is more important than the U.S.'s participation in a, in a fake, in a weak ban treaty. The plan for now is to keep the momentum going with the help of high-profile supporters. Today, folk singer Emmy Lou Harris makes her first visit to Cambodia and the Kin Klang Center. And she says it won't be her last. Do you think there's a, a, enough awareness back home in the States no. about the situation up there? No, not at all. I mean, I happened to read a magazine article about on landmines, so I just happened to read it. And, and talking about the num sheer number of landmines in the world, uh, 110 million. And when I would tell people about it, uh, they would be as shocked as I was. What kind of message will you be taking back home when you leave Cambodia? Oh, about how wonderful the people are and how courageous they are, uh, what they have to deal with, and um, how ultimately um, I think that they come shining through. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really very impressed with what's being done over here, and I hope to come back. And what message will Mueller take back? Well, we have the congressional elections next year, 1998, and I will promise you that we will have legislation as a campaign issue in 1998, and we will absolutely pass legislation mandating the president to outlaw in our personal landmines. I promise you that. When you're in Ottawa and you see all the dignitaries signing the treaty, what will you be thinking? I'll be thinking about how much work we have to still do to get the United States to join this treaty, to put pressure on China to join this treaty, and to bring Russia. If we can bring the United States, Russia, and China, I think we have really crossed the goal line in putting that standard out there that will hold a lot of countries accountable for their continued use of this weapon. So I think Ottawa is a very big step forward to finally putting our arms around this problem of landmines. It's not the end of the story. It's a chapter. It's an important chapter, but there'll be more to do. But with that majority of world countries, countries signing that treaty, we'll be in a stronger position having isolated the United States to bring them on board. And I know we will.